can't believe I have to go after the hip hop presentation. <laughs> Woo, okay. All right, let's do this. So back when I was in grade five, my teacher, Robert Morgan, handed me a ukulele. And he gave us all ukuleles in that class. And for grades five and six, I had the wonderful pleasure of making ukulele music with my classmates. It was awesome. One of my favorite memories of those years. Sadly, after grade six, I had to leave it behind. Went on to pursue studies in piano. I did my degree in music and all that good stuff. Got on with the business of life, kids, mortgage, all that stuff. And sadly, the ukulele disappeared. But a few years ago, I sort of felt like the ukulele was kind of in my sphere again. It was getting popular again, and it was like the universe telling me, Chick, you got to get a ukulele again. And I thought, i got to get a ukulele again. So I did. As any respectable music geek would do, I got a ukulele. And I haven't looked back since. For the record, the proper Hawaiian pronunciation is ukulele, uh, but I'll use ukulele tonight since you know we're on the mainland and all. Um, but obviously, there's a lot of Hawaiian uh, connotations with the uke. I mean, there's a rich history of the ukulele in Hawaii, so a lot of people that conjures up that Hawaiian image. For others, it's uh, an exotic novelty, it's a toy, it's um, certainly looked down upon by many classical musicians, that's for sure. Um, it's had a very rich popular culture history as well. But back in the 70s and 80s, this man, Chalmers Doan, with his lovely daughter uh, there, Melanie Doan, who some of you might know, he took the ukulele and he realized it had a lot of potential as a teaching tool. It was a great little instrument, actually. He brought it into his curriculum in the Halifax Music Program. He taught kids and showed them all kinds of things that were possible on the ukulele. You can strum chords, you can pluck melody, you can play melody and harmony together if you're actually really good at it. You can play some rhythm, you can sing and play together, a whole other skill set altogether. It's wonderful, your training theory, all that good stuff. It could do all those things. These days, we've seen some virtuosos take the ukulele to great heights. We've seen Jake Shimabukuro, his Bohemian Rhapsody kills, it's amazing. And Canada's own James Hill, a wonder. Um, check out Billie Jean on YouTube. Oh, it's absolutely fabulous. But, you know, wonderful thing about ukulele is that it's great for beginners. Kids, especially, it's small. It's great for small hands, it's great for anybody, but it's really portable. Chuck that thing in your backpack, throw it under your desk at work, it makes happy days at work. You can drive it in your car, take it to the campfire. It's also incredibly affordable. What other instrument can you get so much musically out of that you can start at a price point of around $50 for a decent starter ukulele? Not many, I tell you, and it is absolutely worth it. So there's a lot of great things about this uke. You can, you know, it's versatile. Look at all the kinds of music you can play on a ukulele. You can play classical, you can play island, and folk, and pop, and 80s one-hit wonders. They're kind of my favorite. Um, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of things you can do on a little ukulele. Who knew? Uh, look at the kinds of people that have played uke. Oh, my goodness, we've got Warren Buffett up there. Oh, yeah. George Formby, Ingrid Michaelson. We've got Israel Kamaka Viva Ole, amazing. And George Harrison, he loved the ukulele. He wrote songs on the uke. And we know what a good quality musician he was. <laughs> we also have the inimitable Amanda Palmer, who does ukulele hardcore. Check out her ukulele anthem on YouTube, but uh, keep your kids away because it's a little, a little rough. Um, but uh, Pearl Jam's Eddie Vedder also wrote a whole album of ukulele solo songs a few years back, and it's fabulous. There's a wide variety of people who love the ukulele. People learn two, three, five chords and get together with other people who know two, three, or five chords, and we make music together. We sing and play, and we have joy in that process. Um, you can also, you know, curl up on the couch with a glass of wine and strum and play for yourself, and then you have to have that intimate experience of making music for yourself. I think there's a world of possibilities open to you on a little ukulele, a very unassuming little instrument. Um, the ukulele is uh, one of many instruments, obviously, available to you to choose from, and I have a feeling that most instruments actually give you a lot of pleasure when you can play them, but the wonderful thing about mu uh, music played on the ukulele um, is that it's really accessible. It's fairly easy to get started. So a wide range of people can actually play the uke. A broad range of our population can get the joy of making music on this little instrument. And I think that's a wonderful thing because everyone should have access to that wonder wonderful feeling. Um, I've personally experienced it myself. You know, I've played with groups of people. I've sang and played with them. I have uh, advanced my own sets of skills and I've taught it as well. I started a ukulele club at my kids' school in the fall. I was kind of hoping to get sort of six or eight kids and then 50 kids signed up and I was like, oh my God. And every week we get together and we play and we make music. There's a couple of them right there, they rock. 
and it's a wonderful opportunity for kids to get together and leave all their stuff behind at the door. We get their hands on something tactile and creative, and we release this positive energy in the room, which I think everyone needs, not just kids. So I leave you with this today that I hope you will consider getting a little bit of that happiness in your life. And I will end with a quote from the mighty Uke, our very own James Hill, ukulele, pass it on. Thank you.